Zimbabwe's independence started well. Mugabe's and Nkomo's fighters were merged with the Rhodesian forces into a new national army, and Nkomo joined a coalition government. But some of his men went back into the bush to fight on. Secret arms dumps were discovered in the Zapu stronghold of Matabililand. Nkomo denied any knowledge of them. The fact that we have not arrested him is purely out of deference to him, that uh, he's old, he has played that part in the past, in the revolution. We would have uh, picked him long, a long time ago without any, any qualms. But Mugabe sent his crack new force into Matabililand, the 5th Brigade, trained by the North. It's only recently that people have begun to speak openly about what happened over 15 years ago. Pampili or Arachi the beatings, the killing, the torture is unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, uh, these people will play it off. People are being taken daily at night and they disappear forever. And those who are taken to police camp, in the, the stops camp in Burawai, the torture that goes in there is to be seen to be believed, and by the black people to another black man. We were bitter. We didn't mean words. I told him, Gabi, straight. And we expelled from government, because we told him, it's point blank, that this was a betrayal and a very serious one, and you're not going to take it lying low. Wherever you have operations, you're bound to have one or two untoward uh, incidents, but not the mass graves which they talked about. Where are they? You travel the whole length and breadth of Matabeleland, and you won't find a single mass grave. A BBC team filmed as the evidence of one of many mass graves was discovered. A Catholic church inquiry has put the number of those who died at nearly 4,000 on a conservative estimate, and perhaps double that. So the man's hands are tied behind his back? Yes. Tied with wire? I have never witnessed that. I've never heard about it, except to read it from uh, the press. I've never, I've never, at that time, I have had any, 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 any complaint of that nature uh, reaching headquarters. Even to this day, I, I don't believe that it was just the 5th Brigade which, uh, which uh, operated and uh, is now being accused of, uh, 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 of the atrocities. I don't, I don't think they're the, the, uh, the only ones who, uh, uh, who stand accused if uh, accusations are uh, sustainable. I wish we'd also ask the other question, how many people died at the ends of the dissidents? Are you saying Mugabe had no hand in the attacks that were made on Matabeleland? I wouldn't like to 
state that myself. But this is what he says. This was just something that was done by junior officers. He had no hand in it. And we took it for his word. But I wouldn't say myself that he had no hand in it, because I don't know. Mugabe's troops led an attack on Nkomo's house in Bulawayo. They shot his driver and two others. Nkomo narrowly escaped. In fear of his life, the father figure of the liberation struggle fled the independent Zimbabwe he had helped create. <laughs> Government ministers and Mugabe supporters now spoke of a final solution to the Nkomo problem the liquidation of Zapu. Nkomo must be out. He must die in exile. Die in exile? In exile. We don't see him in Zimbabwe anymore. Nkomo is an enemy to all the people. He must be hanged. Hanged? Yeah. Why do you say that? He is disturbing the country. We will order Mugabe. We, we are going to order Mugabe to declare one party state. Mugabe needed no encouragement. A one-party state had always been his ambition. Amenezanu! One party state. The dissident party and his dissident father are both destined not only for rejection but for utter destruction as well. Despite the reign of terror in Matabililand, Mugabe's party made no headway as his opponents hope to demonstrate this weekend, intimidation can be counterproductive. The liberation battle was fought for the vote and to win back land. But 20 years on, blacks still haven't got their hands on the best farms. For the first 10 years, Whites weren't forced to sell, and few did. Some abandoned farms were parceled out to blacks, but the results were disappointing. The government was in a great hurry to just put people on the land. We have now settled 150,000 here and 25,000 there. It was a head-counting exercise. Um, and it, look, it worked for a few years because they were, they were placed, but they, they became disillusioned. So they, they started drifting back. The farms were abandoned, they were left. The big commercial farmers like Jim Sinclair felt they'd won a reprieve. It was certainly a, uh, a very good time for us. We prospered and we were expanding as we did it. Did you feel secure? Absolutely. We realized that uh, although the European farmers were greedy, arrogant, and stubborn, they had something that we didn't want to lose as a country, for our economy to move forward. But the land issue festered in the minds of blacks. If the best land remained in white hands, what had the war been for? In the early 90s, the government began talking of compulsory purchase. But it was all rhetoric. Nothing happened. That's what the war was all about. It was about land. Once there's been a delay, then obviously you expect the people to lose patience and, and think it's best to take things into their own hands. It's a failure of the government, really. In a way, yes, one should admit it's a failure of the government to have got it sorted out. We what? did not plan in time for it. The war veterans who'd fought in the liberation struggle were growing disillusioned. They could see no sign of the fruits of victory being shared with them. What rankled most was that under the Constitution, the pensions of their old enemies in the Rhodesian army were protected, while they got nothing. Three years ago, they summoned the courage to confront Mugabe in person. It was an uncomfortable meeting for the president. It was very, very tough talking because we could then say, right, look here, here is pension.